Hello, and welcome to Nothing Ever Happens in Canada, and I'm Canadian Girl. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to look at the legend of the Lost Lemon Mine. It is said to be somewhere in southwest Alberta and has yet to be rediscovered. The tale goes the two panhandlers were prospecting up near Crowsness Pass when they came across a gold mine. What happens next is an argument, a murder, the land being cursed, and the mine being lost. This story does have many versions, but I've tried to narrow it down to the most common theme across the tales. Join me now as we jump into Episode 1, The Lost Lemon Month. Our story begins with Lafayette French. He had gold fever. He had already been a part of the Fraser River Gold Rush in 1958, the well-known Caribou Rush of 1861 that lasted to 67, and it's also said he was a part of the Horse Creek Gold Rush of 1864. French had heard the tales of the undiscovered gold in the Canadian Rockies. He headed northwest to become a buffalo hunter and trader. He had posts set up on both Blackfoot Crossing and Highwood River, Alberta, which is close to High River today. French continued to feed his gold fever, often frequenting prospecting parties and spending time scouring the mountains alone. Around the mid-1870s, it's said that French hired two prospecting partners to join his team, Frank Lemon and Black Jack, both from Tobacco Plains in northern Montana. Today, this is known as Tobacco River. The two men then decided to go off and try their own luck along the North Saskatchewan River following an old Indian trail up into the mountains. Side note, according to Frida Bundy, a pioneer historian, the Indian Trail may have been the old Stony Pack Trail, also known as the Nakoda Trail, that follows Racehorse Creek through Rancher's Pass and eventually leads to Elk River Valley. Somewhere near Crow's Nest Pass, it's said they started panning where three rivers connect from mountain streams. They went to grab their horses and looked up and noticed a large ledge with thick streaks of gold. What happens next is an argument between the two men, whether to stay in mind what they can now or come back in the spring. I'm not sure what they decided, but we do know that they turned in for the night. While Blackjack was sleeping, the story says Lemon grabbed an axe and hit his prospecting partner right in the head, killing him. Lemon built a massive fire. Consumed with guilt, he paced back and forth all night long, pistol in hand. He even told some he saw his friend's glowing eyes taunting him throughout the night. Legend says a couple of Blackfoots heading south into Livingstone Ridge came across Lemon and Blackjack earlier in the day and kept their eyes on the pair. Once the murder happened, it was reported to their chief. Side note, I could not find out if his name was Jacob or Joseph, as it is claimed to be both in many stories. So for our sake, we will call him Chief Bear's Paw. When Chief Bear's Paw was informed, he returned to the location and placed a curse on the land for all that seek the gold, and he swore his tribesmen to secrecy never to reveal the location of the mine. He destroyed all evidence and the mine's existence. A 
I realize that these locations are all over the map, but I have tried to include them whenever they are mentioned in the stories, as they may lead one of you to the Lost Lemon Mine. Now let's continue with our story. When Lemon returns to civilization and regains his senses, he confesses to a priest what he has done, but also about the mine that he has found. The priest hires John McDougall, a Métis and man of the mountains, they say, to go and give Blackjack's body a proper burial. He does this and returns, and also claims to have seen the great golden ledge that Lemon spoke of. In 1872, John McDougall and Lafayette French are introduced. French hires McDougall to take him to the Great Golden Ledge. The night before McDougall is supposed to meet with his fellow prospectors and discuss details for the trip, he stops in Fort Kip, notoriously known for its potent whiskey, Rotgut Pseudo Whiskey. Here it is said he drank himself to death. Some believe it was the curse put on the lands he was seeking whether it was the location of the golden lemon mine went with him. Encouraged by the priest, Lemon attempts to lead a party of eager prospectors to the now famous lemon mine. He fails. He loses his mind, suspectedly right when they were close to the area, and they had to return back. In 1883, the priest organizes a prospecting party to find the lemon mine but the forest was destroyed by fire that year and it was not able to be traveled through and they had to abort their mission. In 1884, the priest attempts again with Lemon leading the party to the mine. Lemon's mental health fails him. The priest gives up once and for all and Lemon never ever finds the mine again. What happened to Lemon in the end, the tales are conflicting so I can only guess. It is said he was sentenced to be hung, while there are others that say he died of smallpox, and a few other reports that say he fled to his brother's farm in Texas and passed away there. So I assume that he died of smallpox, presumably in Texas before he was ever meant to be hung. There is no record of the hanging ever taking place. Lafayette French continued to suffer from gold fever his entire life. Some blamed it on the curse of the land. He joined many prospecting parties over the years, even one that was led by an acquaintance of Frank Lemon, but he fell very ill and had to leave. For the last 30 years, he continued to search the Canadian Rocky Mountains for his golden treasure. In 1912, he wrote a letter from Bar U Ranch stating that he had found it. Shortly after mailing the letter, his cabin on Willow Creek burnt to the ground, taking French's secret of finding it and him with it. Historian Frank Anderson claimed Blackjack did not die as everyone suspects, but died peacefully an old man in 1913. I did not look into this claim much but I did find it interesting. In 1930, reports of a gold rush in Livingstone Range are reported and set off the first major gold rush in the area. Many men flock to the area. Some say 100 to 300, others say 500 to 700. All left within 10 days, finding no gold or no mine. In 1946, Lafayette French's story is finally published for the first time in Alberta's Folklore Quarterly by his friend, long-term prospecting buddy, Daniel Edward Riley. The story details the mine, the murder, and the curse. In 1979, King Bear's Paw Son of the chief passes away. He is the last known living person connected to the story. He was said to be searching Red Lodge Provincial Park. His father never ever told him the location of the mine. 
In 1988, a second gold rush is set off when geologist Ron Stewart of the University of Alberta in Edmonton announces that he had found large deposits of gold near a small town called Coleman around Crow's Nest Pass. There is a CBC News clip from 1989 that talks about this event. There is a link to it below. In the end, the values were too low to be extracted and the rush was over once again. Now, there's just people like you and me looking for adventure, looking for something lost, looking for something undiscovered. I hope this story inspires you to get out there and search. The lost lemon mine is out there somewhere, waiting to be found. Can you break the curse? Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed my very first podcast. I don't think it went too bad.